Hello everyone, I just wanted to make a quick intro to this video to explain my absence on this channel, what's coming up for Suitcase Monkey and what to expect from this video before we dive into things. For the last month I've been slaving away at the long-awaited Canada vlog and I think you're going to love it. Some of the best footage I've ever shot, an amazing country and it should be out this weekend so keep an eye on that on the main Suitcase Monkey channel. So in anticipation of that video, I wanted to take you behind the scenes and show you what exactly goes into making a video of this kind. So I'm gonna show you how I made the Vietnam vlog, which is currently uh, what's been my most daily watched video for about a year or so now. Um, don't worry, this won't become the how to edit channel. Um, this is maybe just a one-off, but a lot of people have always asked me about how I edit my videos. So you'll get to see all the little tiny details that I think about um, that no one ever notices. So I think you're going to uh, enjoy that little insight on the run up to the Canada vlog coming this weekend, hopefully. Even if you aren't interested in editing, I hope you'll kind of enjoy seeing a bunch of things that go into making these videos and why they take me so long in the first place. Um, so I hope you enjoy uh, watching it or just keep it running in the background as a podcast. But I will now minimize myself into a box and show you why I have a breakdown on a daily basis whilst trying to make these videos. So do enjoy. So uh, Final Cut Pro is the software that I use. The, the first thing that I do as I go through is I, I keyword everything. Um, sometimes I don't really need to do this because I just do stuff chronologically. I've made a Japan keyword down here so I'm able to then see every single thing that relates to Japan. If I need to talk about masks, I have every single time that we wore a mask in the video. Um, Japanese Bridge, I suppose, is a good one in Hoi An, where we visited it at different times throughout the time there, so I have all my Japanese Bridge stuff in, in one place. I don't have to keep going and sort of trying to find all that stuff. Um, I think I have one for Busy as well, which I did. So every time it was kind of busy, so because I knew I was going to talk about the bikes at some point, so as you can see, I have way too many shots here um, of the same thing, which is always my problem. You know, I have like a food one, for example, which is always quite long. Um, a Chiaki and Paul one. So if ever I know I need a shot of us, for example, I know that we, we have all of this stuff. There's Chiaki there running about. But as I'm doing that, one thing I do as well is I, I favourite um, all of the best shots. So the intro is usually just a case of going through all of the favourites and it's just it's introducing the video. So I just pick the best of those favourites and then obviously find um, whatever I need to say that, that sort of is introducing the, the video to people. It's always usually the music that takes me the longest, like it can take me a good hour plus to find the music. Um, I've mentioned this before, but I use a company called Artlist where I have like an affiliate link. If anybody ever wants to use that, message me, I can give you the link because you get a couple of free months if you subscribe, if you go through my uh, link. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, trying, it's trying to find the, the music that, that works here. And as you can see here, so I've, I've used this track called Kingdom Come. Um, Vietnam, it's a country, not a war. And what a country it is. So you can see I've got all these blue markers and stuff here. So I, I like this track because it sort of, it, uh, it, you know, it starts out quite calm. It's got this thing here. And then it gives me a chance to sort of cut in between everything. And um, I use all these blue markers as a way, basically, like if I, if I drag this out, I use all these blue markers as a way to signify different parts of the, the track. And it just basically allows me to know how to match up the track because I'm because I'm, this track actually turns into quite a quite the rave track. So um, I obviously don't want to have the rave stuff in the intro. So I'm just sort of cutting it up. Um, so it just kind of keeps repeating itself and it stays all, as all like kind of one one song, basically. But the music's like super. The music is so important. Um, that's the thing that takes me the longest, especially in the intro. You need it to kind of be um, spot on, basically. So this here, this was something I did almost on the last day. So this is called um, uh, it's, 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 uh, masking and, and keyframing the mask. So as you go into the, um, this took me about an hour to do. So because I shoot in 60 frames a second, it means it's 60 times a second. If you look as I hit all of these, this, I'm going through frame by frame here. You can see I'm, I'm keying. If I, let me zoom in a little bit here. Um, so yeah, so every single time I move the key, um, the, the keyframe points and the mask to go with him cutting off the, uh, the title here. So I, this is the last thing I actually did on the video. I didn't intend on doing it. I just planned on having it there, but 
one of the things that happens with my videos is I kind of I'll do just I sort of do the bare minimum I'm like, eh, and then just as I go through just things start to layer up so little things like this kind of then make it look really kind of cool but I say I had to move those for every single frame I had to do it which so it took forever but I kind of like the, uh, the, the the vibes kind of cool the only thing is that makes it not as good as I wanted is if you look he actually goes under some stuff so there's like shadows um, so it sort of looks like I'm doing bad keyframing because it doesn't stay constant um, but you know it it was good enough so uh, I, I quite like that it's kind of uh, cool I've not done that too much so uh, I quite like that effect I actually had two the thing I couldn't work out about Hanoi again at the start it's YouTube you need to get on with it basically but I think it's also good sometimes to set the tone for what's about to come so in my Sri Lanka video I had a thing where I showed the map and I showed where we were going to go and that video has done really well so I wanted to do something similar for this um, so I had like two versions of the video which I've, if I've still got the first version I'll, I'll kind of show you now its location provides the perfect starting point to travel the country north to south Following Hanoi, we'd be floating through the night in the beautiful Halong Bay. Then, after a short flight, we'd arrive in Hoi An, Vietnam's most charming and atmospheric town, before heading to the historic Hue, home of tombs, palaces and shrines. Our final domestic flight would take us to Ho Chi Minh, the most populated modern city in the country. Ultimately, that was really good. Like It looked good and everything, but it just dragged it down a little bit time-wise. So I just wanted to get on to the next thing. And that's always, I suppose, my number one thing is just, just get on with it, basically. And anything that doesn't have to be there, then remove it or, or reduce it. It's kind of my general uh, vibe. But you see again here, like I'm sort of, I'm I'm uh, jumping between these, these two um, clips of the music just so I can kind of loop it back and it gets to the right point for when I want to be there. So if you listen to this, you'll hear you know, these three different parts of music, but as it's kind of happening in the background, hopefully you don't really notice it. Still suffering from jet lag, we stuffed our mouths with foe and started to explore its buzzing streets. Just so it kind of comes around at the right point. And again, I was like, uh, you know, I was like a mixture of talky and then not talky and talky and just sort of, and just kind of mixing those, um, those two things in. Now I actually had a joke here at the start, um, which again, if I can find it, I'll, I'll, I'll include it. Now, as a young, stupid child, the only thing I successfully remember from history class is that Vietnam was the birthplace of Bubba Gump Shrimp. The I was, I was going to rewrite it, actually, and do it in a better way, because I don't think the way I did it was very good. I didn't um, deliver it very well. Um, but again, I'm always, this is only like four minutes into the video, and so the first proper joke, I don't want it to be a dud, basically. So I cut it for that reason. If it maybe would have been later on in the video, then I probably would have included it, because by that time, people are sort of on your side, as it were, um, and a bit more forgiving for some of the, the jokes. You'll kind of notice that, I guess, in a lot of the videos, like the time when I sort of start to bring more of the humour in is when you get to Hoi An and there's the whole dress thing. Um, but again, I feel like the audience are on your side by that point, so you can kind of get away with that stuff. Whereas if it's like, I don't know, if people are doing silly jokes at the start, you just kind of go, nah. But if you've sort of won people over, then then it's you're a bit more... Uh, susceptible to those kind of jokes. Oh, fun little fact, by the way, this this train clip here, this isn't us. We didn't actually stick around for this because um, the trains are only like three times a day and we didn't we didn't know this basically. So it was more like I was passing on knowledge from what we missed out on. Um, my friend was in Vietnam a few months before we went uh, and it was him who told us about this train track thing. Um, so um, this is his footage here. So we didn't actually go back to this and see this later you want to see a train pass through here first hand. And again there we've sort of had this nice bit we've had talky 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 then we have live action which I rarely have live action in the video so I quite like to let it linger whenever I do. I do it a bit later as well when we are riding the bicycle and we're going past on the the tracks. Uh, I just quite like to let that stuff breathe because I don't let it do that very often. Um, and then again it's sort of you get this nice kind of darker beat it's, it's a darker um, it's night time now and just sort of trying to change the, the mood a little bit. And I quite like the fade out of the horn as well, it's quite nice. Again, you can see like I'm constantly doing this like cutting between these two tracks here just to sort of get it to, I think this is when it, the music starts to change because all these shots are fairly, it's just, um, so kind of quiet stuff, I guess. It's just the, the lake, right? And the next shots are going to be um, people and sort of getting a bit busier. 
So I'll sort of change the music to match that. So that's usually why I'm cutting the, the music, um, just to sort of make it fit with what's going on. Oh, this food was so good. The main, the main difficulty I had with Hanoi was how to fit everything in, because we had the day in Hanoi, then we had the second day with mostly going to that boat place, at Nimbin, um, and then we went back to Hanoi in the evening and then had the evening there. And I didn't sort of want to, usually I do, most of my vlogs I do in chronological order. So that we did this, we did this, but thematically it was nicer to be like, here's Hanoi, here's Ninh Binh, and then here's Ha Long Bay. Um, because I knew I wanted the Ninh Binh boat bit just to be, just to speak its own words, basically, just because it was so picturesque. Um, so I didn't want to kind of have that and then go to the boat and then be like, oh, we're back in Hanoi. We only did like two things. So it was, that's why in this I do like day one and two, day three and four. Like I usually don't do that. Um, but I did in this one, partly because of this, this intro was causing me so much trouble of like, how do I show the different things that we did without sort of dedicating a whole scene to it, basically. So it was this constant thing of how much do you, you want to give detail to the people who want to go, um, but you don't want to dwell on stuff for people who are just watching it as something to, to watch. So it's like, how do you sort of address both of those audiences? So by putting both of the days together, it was easier to sort of talk about that stuff and then still kind of move it along um, pace-wise. Now for the, for the Nim Bin bit, obviously the music is vital because that's the only thing. I had loads of different versions of music. And again, if I have this, I don't know if I do, um, if I have this, I'll kind of show you some different, different what I do is I, I do like rough cuts. But yeah, usually what I'll do is I'll find a bunch of clips. Um, so the way that I've done my iTunes library is I have, I've got all these tracks from, from Artlist. I must have like a thousand or something now. And as you can see here, so this one, if I go into this here, I've tagged it and I've done all this manually, calm, gentle, fast, builds, classical, inspirational. So I've put that into the genre and then I've made what's called um, smart playlists. So a smart playlist um, does the following. So it says the genre contains the genre of electronic and the album is art. So it's only going to be stuff from Artlist, basically. So that means anytime I stick electronic in the genre, it appears in this playlist. So for example, I've got like a gentle one and I've got an inspirational one. So every track in here will have inspirational music in there. Um, so that's kind of how I usually will, will check the stuff I've already got. And then if I still can't find anything, then, then I'll go into Artlist and just download some more stuff basically. Um, because see, I've got all these different, different genres here. So that this is kind of how I find the music. So I'll just layer up like four or five different versions of it with a total like rough cut of the footage itself, and then just try them all basically. And, and the ones that stand out the most is obviously I've not edited the footage to the music yet. And when the music still kind of vaguely works with it, then you know that if you tighten it up even more and change the song around and cut it to the music, then it's going to be even better. So you usually can kind of get a sense of, of which is the right one. So again, just from a, from a pacing point of view, and this is obviously really slow. I suppose one thing as well, I had so much footage um, for this, uh, so much great footage, but the difficulty as well is if you have 10 hours of great footage, then you can't just put a, make a 10 hour video basically. So the hardest thing is always to then cut, um, only keep the best footage in. And it's even more tricky when you have a song that builds and does different ebbs and flows and stuff because you, it's, you can only cut the song to be so short. And there's an example of that coming up in a, in a second, which I can show, but, um, so you kind of have to find out like, what's the shortest this song, if you really like the track, you know, what's the sh shortest that this song can be um, and then just matching it to that. So I did kind of cut this down um, quite a bit, but it, again, it was just sort of, let's get on with it. And then just from a pacing point of view, obviously that's really slow. There's no speaking. Um, you then want to kind of come out of the gate and, and sort of wake people up again. And again, this is just one of these happy accidents. I think I probably picked this track because I wanted to wake people up. And then I realized that it did all this stuff. Fighting Cox, the frog. And it just kind of worked basically. So again, you can see I've sort of cut up the song. So I can't remember if I either added in or cut out or repeated some different different bits here. 
but just then so that the timing goes with the stuff. And, um, and what I've started to do more so on this video than before is I used to do a proper recording, like re-recording it loads of times, trying to get it right, uh, and then use that to build the editing around from the, from the voiceover. What I do now is that I will just do a, like a really basic cut um, where it's just like a one take and even if I mess up the words I just keep going just to sort of get an idea of timing because then when I'm editing I realize some things like oh I can do this or I can maybe I need to change my tone here or I need to do this so it fits with whatever I'm, I'm editing basically um, so then I haven't spent all the time doing a voiceover that I then have to re-record which is what I used to do so I just like do a, um, a basic basic one where I don't even use a mic I just use the mic on, on my Mac um, and then sort of cut that around. So it's it's always low energy as well, the, the version that I'm doing. I'm just sort of literally putting it there. It doesn't sound as performative and interesting. Um, but I think like this was an example where I kind of started to realize the pacing and how I should say it based on um, how it was when I was editing it together. So again, you can see here, so this these, these drums here, if I can just uh, mute this. So that's all just from this one clip, but you can see this clip lasts this long and I wanted the sound to last this long, um, especially for loud sounds. If something's going from quiet, I always want to fade it up. So you can see here, I'm fading up the, the volume here. So if I, if I can just mute my self here, if I bring these up, um, I'll just keep them set. Um, if they just were to, happen straight away as opposed to being I'm going to just stop basically um, so yeah so especially for loud sounds and stuff I'll always fade them up and fade them down this little, this is, this is what, this is like 30 seconds. This is 35 seconds, this bit here. This originally used to be anywhere from 60 to 90 seconds. Um, and this was partly, this is the example I talked about before. So this is partly because this music here, the way that the music fit before, it was nicer for it to be longer. But the clips were, I sort of, it was more here as a, I wanted to show that you can get off the boat and see other things. That was the point of this really. But I almost, I was this close to cutting this bit because it didn't really do anything. Um, but it was also then the next thing says after we got back onto the boat. So it, it sort of, it didn't really make any sense if it didn't show us not getting off the boat. Um, but yeah, this is like one example where I kind of couldn't quite figure out how to, how to, how to do it. After sanitizing our hands with acid water. One of my favorite jokes in the whole thing. Favorite jokes, acid water, silks, suits, and dresses. Love that joke. Um, Jackie didn't find it funny at all though, but. I thought it was hilarious. This is the funny thing as well. Like, I don't know if it's, if it's cool to laugh continuously at your own jokes. Because once you sort of edited it, it becomes, it's not yourself, it's something else. And so I found it hilarious. Um, and I laughed every time I watched it. Um, yeah, as well, like, you know, this, this is a prime example. So I've literally got what? I've got five and a half seconds of this um, spring roll stuff of the cooking, whereas these were all of the clips. So this is when they're explaining it, this is making it, making it, making it, like this is, like all of these clips here, this is me eating it. So that's like, that's a lot of footage. But yeah, so uh, the point I suppose I want to say is I film so much more and then I only just end up using two clips because, because I don't storyboard anything because I'm just on holiday. Like I don't really know what I'm talking about. I might have, this might have been the greatest moment of the holiday. So you sort of need to film stuff. Um, so I need to figure out how to do that better. Look at those. Beautiful. These are really nice. Um, this, so I actually did do a... Um, a Tai Chi class. I went, Jackie didn't because it was like 6 a.m. in the morning. She was in bed. Um, so it was a group thing. And then Jackie came up afterwards when we were the only ones on the, on the boat. And um, this is, this is me. And this is the, the real time version of it. And then uh, obviously this goes on for ages. And so in the video, you can see here, I sped it up by 281%. 
Um, so that's what's um, that's what happens in the in the video. Um, this bit here, so I couldn't quite work out how to do this. So the the way that I did it, because this is you know similar shots to what I had before, but this I realised there's a bit more interesting story about this one. So I thought, well, I, so it doesn't double up on just another boat scene with some music like happened five minutes ago. The first one was like, hey, isn't this very nice? Bit of a breather, no talking, music, 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 very good. Um, bit of an interlude. So then this one, it's the same stuff, but I'm talking over it the whole time. So it feels like something different and I'm giving information. So that was kind of how I justified having these two things, which could have been very similar if I had just put music over it again. It would have been like, oh, I've seen this already. Um, so that's why I kind of did it this way. Again, this is quite a sort of slow bit of mute. Well, actually, no, but it's sort of calm and ending. So to juxtapose that with quicker music and stuff. Again, I use this track quite a lot. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Um, and now I feel like we've settled into it. So I could, this is when I start doing all the, the jokes and stuff and not being in, uh, excited by this. So by... What are we in now? We're 12 minutes in, so I feel I can get away with these jokes now. Just to be clear, I asked Food and Road for permission to use this video. Um, always need to ask permission. I would just say, so th this little graphic here. So I just use an app called Keynote, which is a free Apple app. It's just to do presentations and stuff, but it, you know, you can do all trans um, movement and and effects and stuff as part of just a you know like powerpoint you can do transitions and stuff so this is just keynote and then you can export it with no backgrounds then when you export it with no background it then becomes its own uh it's like a graphic basically so all this is just basically presentation animations where i've just manually moved all this stuff and then i just stick it on top of the video because i don't know how to do graphics but i know how to use presentation tools so that's that uh, so this is that example of, of the, the bike and just letting the, the live sound breathe. Again, I fade in. And again, I've this clip, this clip, and this clip is all from this one clip, but I've just sort of mixed them because I think there was, there was a car horn in here. So I didn't want the car horn to, to ruin the peacefulness of it. So I just used the, the quieter bits and just looped them over. Last day in Hoi An was a relaxed one. And again, I'm sort of fading in the music here as well, so it's not, it's all nice and, and peaceful. Uh, again, same thing, we've, we've matched up. These, these markers are just for the beats, so I can kind of try and get it on the beat. So especially if I'm talking over the top of it, it's quite easy to mask the, if the cut of the music isn't very good, but when it's just the music on its own, you really have to get it spot on. Um, so these would have been marking that beat there. These would have been marking that beat there. And then again, if I put these together, if you're listening for it, you can hear it. But if you're not, you, you can't. Actually, I remember this one because this one here, it has a more like ding, ding, ding. It's like it's going faster, which is why this is a really long, you can see this is a really long S fade in and out as compared to say these two, which is probably what it would normally be. And it's because if it was shorter, you would notice it more. So I had to prolong the crossfade. So you can hear it now, but if you just bring it up quickly, it's really obvious. So again, these are all, I could, I could have done a good 20 seconds on this, um, on this place here, could have done a good 10 seconds on this place, could have done a good 20 seconds on this place, but at this point, I just wanted to kind of get on with it, really. So um, I just wanted, again, for people who really want to know all the info and, and are going and want to sort of favorite some places, they've, you know, they've got three seconds in which they can pause the video and uh, get the names of these different uh, coffee shops and stuff. And, you know, that's, I left a review on Google Maps of some of these places. So if they want my full opinion, they will, uh, they will get it there. 
And again, I, I, I do this quite a few times, but it's quite nice to sort of, especially if you're kind of fading out to black as like this is the end of the chapter, it's quite nice just to tease the next thing that's, that's coming in. Final domestic flight, which would take us to Ho Chi Minh, Vietnam's most populated and forward-looking city. Yeah, it's quite no, nice way to tear it off. Um, and again, I really like this music, so I sort of wanted to let the music breathe. And again, we're right near the end now. This music's kind of got a bit of a coming to an end sort of vibe. Like it's sort of quite positive, but still quite like lethargic as well. So I quite liked how that fit with where you are in the holiday, where you're still kind of like, hey, cool, I'm on holiday. But you're starting to get a little bit like, I'm a bit knackered now. And also it works for the joke, where it's quite grand music, using a grand piano. Uh, and I quite like how um, that then mixes with the, the joke um, that's coming up. And I think the music kicks off a bit as well when it when I appear in the shot, which sort of adds to the comedy. So yeah, so it's about fit, fitting the music again with the, when you sort of see the reveal. If you look at almost pretty much like, you can see the music here at the bottom, kicks off just as I'm coming into frame. So trying to match that up. So yeah, so I, I was, um, I had this whole thing, I, original version I had at the start was, it was this really terrible thing of like, why did a chicken cross the road? Because I had footage that had a chicken and I thought all the thing about chickens crossing the road and then people are crossing the road and it's busy. And it, it's one of these things where sometimes you have these, these ideas and you kind of just become stuck to them. And it's also just about having the faith and confidence to, even though you might have thought about it for a long time and think it's great, you just need to go with, with, um, what's best as opposed to getting stuck on something that doesn't work um but actually uh so i listened to the because it's all instrumental music the art list stuff that i listen to um i often have it playing on in the background just to sort of just have music playing in the background while i'm editing or i don't when i don't need to hear the video or if i'm writing scripts or if i'm researching and stuff and um this music which i have here bang clap bang clap by big energy drums um this just happened to be playing whilst I was looking at this footage and I realized how um, perfect it was. So that's kind of how it ended up into the scene. So yeah, that just happened and it was kind of cool. So um, I kept it in. And again, uh, you know, I rarely have live action here, but this is the longest, this is 30 seconds as one clip, which I never ever do. Like probably the average is four or five seconds per clip. If you look at all of these, these other clips and stuff that I've got. Um, but I really wanted to, I thought it was quite good footage, um, but I added in the, uh, this extra sort of uh, subtitles here just because it was such a long clip that I sort of wanted something else happening to, um, distract the viewer, not distract the viewer, but keep them entertained as well, as opposed to just watching a man cross a road, which is basically what this is. Um, so, uh, so yes, that's why I kind of added that in later. Um, and again, I, I've used these markers here to sort of give me an idea of when I say it. So when I'm putting the titles in, it's easy to, um, to match them up. And this is the other thing that kind of happens, um, with music is, you sort of put the scene down, you put the music down, and then the music then enhances the video. So where did that happen? So there I did this like kind of reversey thing, because I just, I saw that the thing, the chicken, I don't, know, I don't know if people see this, but the chicken falls on the floor. There it goes. And then I just reverse it and put it back. And so I just kind of make it vaguely work with the music. It wasn't perfect, but I couldn't get it right. So that was just what it was. Um, so then that kind of sets the, that like sets the, the tone as this being a thing. And so then just as I do the big reveal for, hey, look how cool Ho Chi Minh is at night. Um, I then do this. And so I just like the, the music kind of, once you find the right tune, it, it then enhances and changes maybe how you pace the, the clips and stuff. Um, I really enjoyed this bit. It's something I don't normally get to do. So I sort of got to do this little horror scene. 
um, which was kind of fun. And again, I'd found this music ages ago and I sort of thought if ever I need to do like a scary thing, this is going to be ideal. Um, so I, I kept this music and I think I almost just found it straight away because it's one of the few, I think it's in like dramatic or serious is, is my genre thing. So I found it pretty quickly. And um, again, it's one of those things I just, I put the clip in and it just worked yeah. straight away. So again, so this is sort of, uh, this is where the music then, you know, originally I had it. So this was just the, um, this is all one clip. Whereas before I, I'd sort of cut it to kind of cut this, this sort of pan, this, um, this camera pan here, I cut that out. Cause I like usually in my clips, you'll see that I don't have too much camera move, movement. Like if ever I zoom, like manually zoom and stuff, I don't have that in there. Cause I don't like seeing the workings of a camera. Um, cause you know, your eyes don't zoom on something. So I just try and show more what you can see. And, um, but then I realized that you had this music. So again, um, here I specifically sped up this part of the, the clip just so it kind of introduces how you were going into something a little bit different here. And thought we'd give it a go. Upon Which is kind of cool. Um, but you know, this, this bit here, this is this happens every now and then. And it's just the greatest um, where the mu the video goes with the music by accident. So that kind of like pan of the camera whilst the the music stops. That was just total coincidence. Um, and then again, this was a late originally. Let me see if I can get rid of this. This was originally what it looked like. It was just a, a simple shot basically. But then I realized that, you know, those, those dramatic bangs and it's the climax of the, of the sort of bit. So I just then sort of chopped it up basically. I think I just took the clip, chopped it up into even sections, chopped it up again, chopped it up again. So it was in like 16 parts. And then I was able to then just sort of jump cause it needs to, to jump. So. Um, and this as well, is what's called the Ken Burns shot. So this shot is actually, is just a, a straight shot. Um, if I just duplicate this a second. So this is the shot. It's literally just a stationary shot of a sign. Um, whereas this one, if you look here, it focuses, it looks like the camera's focusing on that. And that's because I've done something called the Ken Burns. So this green is the start of the image. This red is the end of the image. So it's basically saying start here, end here, and it gets from those two locations within, within this time frame, basically. So that's why it looks like the camera's zooming in on that. So again, it was just to provide as much movement as possible and kind of heighting, you know, keep calmer on the last floor. Blah, 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 blah. So, um, yeah, and it's just Ken Burns, which lets you move the camera without moving the camera. So yeah, and then, and I don't always do this. I've done this a few times. I did this in the Malta video. I kind of did this in the Cotswolds video. Um, it's just quite nice to circle back to what I was talking about at the start and kind of like, you know, where, what have we learned since this, um, and sort of do a bit of a, bit of a reflection, uh, which is quite nice. Um, and again, I talk about peace and she was given the peace sign. So originally I didn't put two and two together, but I realized I was looking for, I was like, who, who's been in this video? And I realized that she gives the peace sign. So I think it was actually when I was doing like a final watch when I watched it through. I was like, oh, she's doing the peace sign. I talk about peace. So I put that one in as opposed to, I think I had the, the woman rowing the boat was the original clip of that, which is kind of cool. Um, and again, just sort of just referencing back to the coffee because just to close things off and sort of have a joke, which, uh, which uh, there's the clip that I cut originally. So I, I put it back here at the end because I quite liked it as a comedy clip. Um, and yeah, this was a whole scene, which I talk about in the other Vietnam video. I cut out this entire scene from the video, but it's a really nice shot. So I put it in right here at the end, just to sort of show other shots. So all these shots weren't in the, the video, a lot of this stuff here, just so it's not like I'm showing old clips basically. And that's Vietnam. Uh, any editing questions? Uh, let me know. Is this interesting? Have I just wasted my time? My fans, as you can hear, are going crazy because um, I've been messing around with my timeline. Hopefully that hasn't been picked up on the microphone. And if it is, I apologize. I won't be able to edit that out rather ironically. <laughs>